great place to be. A great place to learn. A great place for education. This is BB101 Radio. Breaking Barriers. Buenos dias, buenas tardes, and buenas noches to all our listeners and viewers on YouTube and Facebook Live. Hello and welcome back. Yep, all a partner. All right, it's it's been a week. Yes, and we are back. All right, I'm Shay. And I'm Kervin. And this is BB, BB 101 Radio. Radio. So if you're new in this channel, make sure to subscribe in our YouTube and Facebook account. Yeah, for you to stay connected. Hello, partner. Hello. You seem so happy today. <laughs> yes, I'm really excited mm -hmm. and I'm pretty much enthusiastic for today because today is going to be about Spanish culture. Spanish. Now that's yeah. the reason why we have that music. Yeah. <laughs> this also the third episode of this is the third episode of our program. Exactly. So welcome to BB101 Radio, mm -hmm. the radio for learners. This is Breaking Barrier. And we are going to talk about the episode 3 mm -hmm. partner and it's all about Spanish culture and their origin of mistakes. I love that. Spanish culture and the origin of mistakes exactly so today we are going to talk about the Spanish culture as yep. we said and we are going to reveal the reason why we tend to commit commit those mistakes exactly right <laughs> right and this is also in celebration of Spain's festivals mm. okay. do you know anything that they celebrate in the month of July for example in the month of July I, mm -hmm. I remember how one of my friends told me Sergio told me it's, it's oh. interesting to visit San Fermin uh, the, the festival the of San Fermin festival. Oh, yes okay. running with bulls yeah so amazing like wearing red they tend to wear red right yeah mm -hmm. do you agree that it, it's something that is going to attract the attention of the bulls perhaps it's because of the color yeah I think so yeah. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it really it's, it's with the color that they wear. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so they have recently celebrated San Fermin. Mm -hmm. So, well, this is something that is different because of these trying times. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they, we're going to celebrate it for them. <laughs> yeah. So, the same with that celebration, mm -hmm. of course, we are going to celebrate it in a different way as well. Exactly. An online celebration. Yes. How so, <laughs> yeah. It, Join our party. So that's going to be an online party for sure. <laughs> and partner, we're also going to talk about, yes, the Spanish culture. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be in our segment, Learners Talk It Out. That's a 15-minute radio talk mm -hmm. that is filled with mind-blowing ideas. Okay. Yeah, I believe we also have this uh, segment in, in our uh, Q&A session. Mm -hmm. Right, we're going to talk about the similarities and differences of Spanish students and or, or the different learners that we have in the academy. Well, well, all of these in the next 30 minutes of our show. Amazing. So do you have any comments, insights, reactions about our topic for today? Mm -hmm. Make sure to comment down below and connect with us. So coming up next is the Learners Talk It Out after a short break. Viruses can be everywhere outside. It's a bad idea to expose your loved ones to it. But how are they going to build confidence in communicating confidently? Don't worry. You can stay safe at home while learning be more confident with us. Improve and join our public speaking club. A friendly reminder from Fitz Language. Hola, buenos dias, buenas tardes, and buenas noches to all our listeners and viewers on YouTube and Facebook Live. Hello and welcome back. Yep. 
Welcome back. So like what we have mentioned earlier, partner, today is a special day because we are going to feature our music, Spanish culture. Yes. Yes. And we are going to know the origin of some uh, pronunci pronunciation and grammar mistakes. Yes. This is really an exciting episode, partner. Mm -hmm. We want almost everyone, mm -hmm. um, almost everyone has the origin of their mistakes and it's likely being affected by what they call regional accent yes i have to agree with that mm -hmm. not just for a specific culture mm -hmm. or nationality but for everyone for filipino learners we have problems when it comes to pnf pth yeah. uh, what else we have some people are having some problems with the r sound mm -hmm. right and for our spanish students they tend to have a problem in pronouncing some words such as the g sound and g sound the j mm -hmm. the g and the r i think i've mentioned the g twice yeah. <laughs> yeah. the ng especially yeah. the ng singer right. or something like that well, it's quite challenging mm -hmm. to pronounce at first. I love that expression, at first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes, so uh, these are the things that we are going to discuss. And not only that, that we have uh, top seven common mistakes. Okay. Yes. And uh, I believe every one of us are pretty excited. I am. Mm -hmm. How about you? Are you excited? Well interact with us by having a comment or leaving a comment on the comment section. <laughs> Let's jump right in. Partner. Okay. Yes. So I have some list here mm -hmm. and uh, these are some seven common mistakes. Oh. Well, we have a friend here from Fluent U, mm -hmm. uh, a blog site for learners. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's start with the first sentence. The first <laughs> sentence is I have 25 years oh I have 25 years yeah so it's easy to understand that it should be I am 25 years old right mm -hmm. but uh, the question is how how or what's the origin behind it so uh, simply because uh, to say that you are 25 years old you would say tengo 25 años oh you have a, a good Spanish accent. Partner. Yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> so it's I am 25. That is the reason. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it should be. And for, for the, all of the listeners, for you not to be confused, I am is something that, you, that describes you, right? I am a teacher, mm -hmm. right? And I have is, should be something that you possess, right? I have... Um, desktop computer here exactly. i have a partner here yeah i have a microphone in front of me that's it mm -hmm. so. you have a computer or you have a mobile phone in front of you while watching us here yeah right <laughs> okay what do we have next okay another thing that spanish students tend mm -hmm. to commit is with the usage of words such as bored and boring mm -hmm. so some spanish or most of my uh, students tend to okay. say oh teacher i am boring at home so they they want to say that they are mm -hmm. quite bored at, at home because well they, they're not doing anything so far mm -hmm. so, yeah you might understand what they're trying to say though if you're going to jump into the technicalities of okay. it you're going to to know that it's not the right word to say okay mm -hmm. so let me give you the tip on how you're going to be enlightened with these pairs in english so when you are going to talk about your feelings mm -hmm. okay when you're talking about your feelings then you have to end it with an ed mm -hmm. okay and if that's the reason i mean the reason why you're feeling that way so that is the word or the adjective that ends in ing let's say um, this segment is interesting mm -hmm. so i am excited right now Ooh. okay so that's how you're going to differentiate the ed and ing of adjectives so we're just talking about the adjectives mm -hmm. okay we're not talking about the verbs yep 
Do not get confused. Okay. Yeah, I believe, uh, let me just give some tip. Uh, uh -huh. The reason I believe uh, why they are pretty confused with that is soy aburrido, right? Oh! That's the reason why they said I am boring. Mm. Uh, but what they want to say is that I am bored, which is estoy aburrido, oh, right? Okay. So I am boring, which is the I am bored. Uh -huh. right? For you not to get bored, please type or comment down below and get involved. Okay, I have the next one here, which is the people is very kind. Mm. People is like la gente. You know, they, they use it for a singular partner. Yeah, that's what I've noticed. Even to our intermediate students mm -hmm. or even to some of our advanced students. Okay. They, they tend to get things mixed up. Though mm -hmm. they will say, I know a teacher, I know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they know it. Sometimes they tend to... Uh, forget or sometimes they don't know that they have committed mm -hmm. that um, slips in grammar or that slip in grammar so it's really important that you know that by heart mm -hmm. because well when you're having a conversation with a teacher it's fine because your teacher is going to correct you but when you're out with mm -hmm. someone else and then you said it the people is really kind then that is going to be really a what? It's more like the person will think that you don't have such a good level because mm -hmm. this is a basic English grammar. Yeah. Okay. So don't be confused. People are, right? People are. Yes. Okay. Okay, and we have another one, partner, mm -hmm. which is a really common mistake as well for my Spanish students. Well, I'm okay. speaking in behalf of the students who whom I have handled. Okay. They, they tend to say that um, I like something, but they tend to mm -hmm. use the noun first before the adjective, which okay. is pretty much different in English, right? <laughs> so we, we have the adjective because we are describing the noun, mm -hmm. but in, in their language, in their grammar, they tend to use the, the noun first okay. before the adjective. So that really makes this sentence construction and the the thought of the student in in a messy way oh, okay. <laughs> okay yeah i remember an expression like uh, corazon amable or camiseta azul right something Ayan, like that uh, camiseta azul it's something that we know in our, our language because mm -hmm. we use the same words mm -hmm. right azul and camiseta but in in our uh, language we can say that azul camiseta mm -hmm. <laughs> right right the blue shirt That's that shirt right mm -hmm. okay. shirt something like that so always remember to put the adjective first before the noun that's an english rule right okay. english grammar rule mm -hmm. okay another one uh -huh. is pretty common my mom is teacher hi to my mom too uh, <laughs> that is uh, pretty yes. uh, they're listening right now <laughs> <laughs> your mom's a teacher right yes my <laughs> mom is a teacher so i have the used ah uh, the article uh, because that how should it be instead mm -hmm. of my mom is teacher like um hey, for instance i am a teacher and in spanish they tend to express it like soy profesora something oh. like that soy profesora right mm -hmm. without articles without so mm -hmm. that's that's idea like uh, and, and some Spanish like uh, words they do not use indefinite pronouns or, or indefinite articles rather mm -hmm. like un or una mm -hmm. that, that's what I can remember right they don't they don't add it in their sentence when they are talking about their professions mm -hmm. so a uh, or an I I remember that we have discussed that in our previous episodes in our yep. Q&A session That's wherein right. someone asked us about the usage of a uh, and an mm -hmm. right when it comes to articles so just to give you a, a recap when it comes to that mm -hmm. so you use the a uh, when okay. you are pertaining to the consonant sound yep. okay not with the spelling that is right. right and the other one you use the an when you're talking about the, mm -hmm. uh, the vowel the vowel right? the vowel sound 
That's great. All right, as we have the word honest in university. Oh yeah, I remember that. Right. An honest person in mm -hmm. a university. University. All right. Yes, partner. And another uh, thing, another confusion mm -hmm. that Spanish tend to commit mm -hmm. is when they're having two negatives in a row or in a sentence, oh. which makes the sentence confusing for mm -hmm. native speakers and, well, English learners. Like, right. I don't know nothing? Yeah, so what is it that you don't know, right? It, it doesn't have the... Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's going to be challenging to understand. For example, on my end, I will, I might say that I will understand what you're trying to say, but if mm -hmm. we're going to talk about the technicalities or uh, technicalities, we are going to, well, we're going to think that it's really hard to understand, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so it's, it's really important that you're going to have the negative and positive. So mm -hmm. do not put both negative in a sentence. Okay. That's called double negation. Double negation. Right. But then in Spanish, uh, in some exp Spanish expressions, it's like uh, no escribi nada. No, mm. that's negative. And then nada is nothing. Mm. So that, that's the reason why uh, I didn't write nothing. Exactly. It's mm -hmm. because they are translating it literally mm -hmm. from their language to okay. the English language. For that reason, they are having some difficulties, mm -hmm. right? They're having some difficulties um, having or constructing mm -hmm. the correct sentence. That's right. And to avoid that, simply use or avoid double negation. Yes, and avoid thinking in Spanish. Avoid the translation, okay? As much mm -hmm. as possible, try it. Try to do it little by little. So try to think using your native or not your native language, but mm -hmm. your target language. Okay. Okay, it's gonna help you a lot uh, improve mm -hmm. because even though you're not talking to someone else okay. it's going to help you have interaction with your brain it's not about being crazy mm -hmm. <laughs> but when you're a practicing partner it's going to help you if you are using okay you are using the English language yeah, that's right the native or the target language that you want to to perfect yes okay it's really important. <laughs> okay. And the last one that we have here, partner. Yeah. It, it's not about the uh, pronunciation mm. or, or grammar rules in terms mm -hmm. of the way you speak, but the way you write things. Exactly. So what we have here is, say for instance, on Mondays, mm -hmm. I study English. Mm. So there are instances that uh, it's about the capitalization rules. Uh-huh. Right? It's uh, pretty different between Spanish and English. Exactly. Mm -hmm. For instance, words that are capitalized in English, uh, like Cristiano Ronaldo, mm. oh, of course, the Leo Messi. Do not forget, <laughs> so for the fans, mm -hmm. to avoid <laughs> conflict. <laughs> and we have some, of course, the places, Madrid, mm -hmm. and say, for instance, um, Malaga. Oh, yeah. <laughs> different I love places. Malaga. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, those things are capitalized mm -hmm. in in Spanish. That's language. right. But some of the words that are not capitalized in okay. their languages, the days of the week. That's it. Right. Let's say lunes, martes, yes. miércoles. Right? Religion. I believe they're, they're ah. not also uh, capitalizing it. Yeah, and as well as the days or the months of the mm -hmm. year, enero, febrero, marzo. Yes. Those uh, words are not capitalized in uh, mm -hmm. Spanish language, but in English, it is capitalized. So if ever you're going to have written communication, let's mm -hmm. say letters or emails, it's vital that you know that that word should be okay. capitalized. Perhaps these are, well, given in, well, mm -hmm. when you're studying, it's a basic uh, thing in in the language or English language but due to the well to to the language that they have mm -hmm. they, they tend to get things mixed up even though they know so mm -hmm. all you have to do is to keep on practicing okay there's no harm in practicing mm -hmm. 
from time to time. From time to time. Okay, there you have it. We have talked about the common or the seven mistakes of Spanish students uh, that, of course, they, they tend to commit. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So, what is the part that you can relate to? Make sure to comment down below and interact with us. Mm -hmm. That's it. So stay tuned here at BB101 Radio. And coming up, coming up next is the Q&A session after this short break. Viruses can be everywhere outside. It's a bad idea to expose your loved ones to it. But how are they going to build confidence in communicating confidently? Don't worry. You can stay safe at home while learning to be more confident with us. Improve and join our public speaking club. A friendly reminder from Fitz Language. Viruses can be everywhere outside. It's a bad idea to expose your loved ones to it. But how are they going to build confidence in communicating confidently? Don't worry, you can stay safe at home while learning to be more confident with us. Improve and join our public speaking club. A friendly reminder from Fitz Language. Welcome back! Congratulations for making it this far if you can still hear us and see us. Right, so in this segment, partner, we are going to talk about Spanish cultures or the Spanish learners compared to other learners in the world. How exciting! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, one thing that I can say is that Spanish students, so I'm with you guys, so Spanish students are eager to speak. Mm. Yeah, will you agree with that? Well, indeed, I mm -hmm. have to say that, and this makes them a good learner. Yeah. Right? As they are really expressive. Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, and, and I'm saying this by experience, partners. Mm -hmm. uh, since most of the students that I've handled mm -hmm. were expressive, and I'm not just speaking about the, the beginner students, mm -hmm. or I'm not just speaking about the fluent enough, okay. but even to the students who cannot express themselves really well. Okay. So they tend to express their ideas even though they are grasping for some words and I'm, I'm really happy with those kinds of learners who are really eager to speak. I have to agree with that, Parker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, another thing is that, uh, you know, we, we can tell based on the student that I have handled, mm -hmm. um, some of them are shy. Oh. It's pretty contrasting right yeah so what I was saying earlier is uh, they are pretty expressive mm -hmm. and at the same time they are shy or we're like not being confident because be. of their accents and the way of speaking yeah I've I've noticed that even to one of my advanced students mm -hmm. he's really or he he has the good accent mm -hmm. it's more like similar to American accent Mm -hmm. Though he feels like he, it's not enough. He feels like he needs to learn more because he's not that confident. Mm -hmm. So that, that's one good thing that I've, that I've uh, discovered mm -hmm. when it comes to Spanish learners. It's because they are not complacent. Mm -hmm. They want to learn more. They want to explore more. Okay? They are not contented with that kind of level, for example. Which okay. I find really good. Okay. Right? Yes. So that's something positive that we have to look forward to. Exactly. But, but just be mindful to all of the listeners that we have or viewers that we have that mm -hmm. accent is not the measurement of intelligence. Exactly. So be confident with what you have, improve yourself, um, and that's good. They're pretty competitive. They're not complacent, so mm -hmm. they want to improve more. Yes. And I have to agree with what you have said, partner, that mm -hmm. it's not the accent that is the measurement of the intelligence of a mm -hmm. person. It's all about what you say, right? It's right. all about how you deliver your message to, to others. Mm -hmm. It's all about how the person understood what you want to say mm -hmm. or what you have said 
for example. Okay. So we have a solution for that. Uh, uh -huh. Earlier we were talking about that Spanish, uh, most of Spanish are like expressive, but at the same time, are talkative, yeah. but at the same time they are a bit shy. So uh -huh. solution here is this question. Have you ever joined a club? What kind of club, partner? Mm -hmm. What kind of club? So this is a good start for you. Let me make a segue. We have <laughs> uh, a speaking club here, a Fitz language oh, is speaking club. A speaking club. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, especially now, partner, because we have less interaction with people. We mm -hmm. don't normally go out and we are at home. Most of us are at okay. home or we are just working. We don't, I mean, we have lessened our okay. social interaction. So this kind of activity or club is okay. essential or it, it can help, right? That's it can right. help us develop our speaking skills as well as to widen our network. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That's pretty cool. So, yes. Tell me something about it. I'm quite okay. interested. I want you guys to look on your screen right now because here are some of the benefits of our English speaking club. Of course, mm -hmm. interaction, competitiveness is there, uh -huh. listening skill, accountability of your own learning, mm -hmm. and of course, communication skill and what you've said, you can build relationship, you can uh, widen your network, and of course, you can value money. Uh -huh. Perhaps they're also wondering how mm -hmm. they're going to get those benefits, okay. right? Well, when it comes to speaking or in this kind of public speaking activity or club, okay. you will have the chance to, to meet other people. It's like a maximum of 10 in one group, mm -hmm. right? So it's more like having the interaction with people with the same level as you. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the, the, the problems or challenges that people face when they feel like they cannot understand or they don't belong okay. in a specific group it's mm -hmm. like it's like you are you're a filipino uh -huh. and then you are surrounded by different nationality okay you, you will feel awkward right yeah. it's the same with english when you are with um, people with different levels let's say higher level than you or so high mm -hmm. level than what you have let's say you are an A and then you are surrounded by C let's mm -hmm. say advanced students so you feel like you don't understand a thing in there mm -hmm. though it's a good challenge okay. but you are going to learn and you're gonna challenge yourself to step up however uh, most of the time you won't understand it right so in this kind of public speaking club you're going to meet people with the same level as you mm -hmm. okay so or, or more like higher than your level a bit Mm -hmm. a bit higher but you will feel inclusivity in this that's right there's diversity mm -hmm. with different people different accents but you're going to have different tasks yeah since it's by mojo that's that's one thing that i know mm -hmm. and you're going to interact with people that's one of the good things that i have noticed in this kind of public speaking club yeah okay so to be specific with that um mm -hmm. If they are going to join this uh, speaking club, they are going to have an access for a year. For them. Mm. So the once they sign, they can have, or well, we have a Facebook, Facebook yeah, page, right? Yeah, we have a Facebook page and an exclusive mm -hmm. uh, public, or not exclusive in public, <laughs> that's oxymoron, okay. an exclusive um, group mm -hmm. just for them, okay? Yes. Only for the learners. Only and if for you. yes, the facilitator <laughs> will meet them once a month. Mm -hmm. The real time checking for uh, the students. Yes. So you will have mm -hmm. the chance to meet a facilitator. Okay. Once a month. So you're going to have interaction. You're going to have different tasks, right? Which is pretty cool for me. Okay. Right. You have your own uh, pace, self paced learning mm -hmm. as, at the same time you're learning with other people mm -hmm. right and one good thing is that uh, most of the Spanish students are busy okay well they have their own thing they have their own schedule or schedule mm -hmm. so in this kind of module they, okay. they can access it 24 7 so they won't have a problem missing their classes okay. since it's your own time yeah, right? you're using your own time so it's it's really good for mm. me so what do we have to expect 
So we have this particular format, which is like a counterpoint meeting. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't heard of that, don't worry, it will be introduced to you. So uh, yes, okay, could you please? Uh, we have there on your screen, so. Yes, another thing that you can get from this kind of public mm. speaking club is okay. you are, like what I've mentioned earlier, partner, you're going to be classified depending on your level. Mm -hmm. So right, if you're a beginner, a learner, intermediate learner, mm -hmm. or advanced learner. Okay. okay. So it, will, it won't be difficult or challenging for you to interact with other people. Okay. So 10 groups or 10 uh, people mm -hmm. or group, right? And yeah, it is more like the the game. It's more like a game. Mm -hmm. Have you ever watched Game of Thrones? Oh, yeah. Thrones. <laughs> yes, Game of Thrones. I love yeah. it. So they are fighting over a throne or mm -hmm. a throne. And in this case, it's more like being a pro. Uh -huh. Do you know what pro is, partner? Like professional? Yeah, or more like... Yes, a uh, professional one or a really uh, someone who is really good at something. You're mm -hmm. a pro, right? Do you, do you want to be a pro? So the title of that is like Game of Pros. Oh, Game of Pros. <laughs> so it's pros. based on having the game. So mm -hmm. if you're really competitive and if you want to improve mm -hmm. your skills through competition, though it's more like having a competition within yourself mm -hmm. and with others. So you will have the chance to have a, a speaking practice, okay. right? To to have a speaking practice as well as to know another group mm -hmm. by joining a competition. That's so, right. I, I remember mm -hmm. there's a specific for groups there. Yeah, for groups. Yeah, like for cows. Now. House of fluency. Uh, yeah. House of accuracy. Exactly. Um, House of yeah. yeah. Sure. Assertiveness. Assertiveness. <laughs> and and uh, confidence, of course. Yeah, house of confidence. House of confidence. Mm -hmm. I want to be part of those houses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they are going to be classified in, in that specific, I mean, depending on their capability, for example. Mm -hmm. What kind of house do you, do you want to be part of? I want to be the house of confidence. That's, that's what I need. Mm -hmm. And for most viewers that we have, that's what they need. They need to be confident. Uh -huh. Most of my teammates there are good already mm -hmm. you're not just confident so right. go mm -hmm. for the team confidence so, <laughs> I'm, I'm asking them to join mm -hmm. uh, this team now yeah. <laughs> so for further details you can check this out on fits language of yeah. course uh, visit www.fitslanguage.com right and you can also email us mm -hmm. at info at fitslanguage.com Mm -hmm. So there you have it. I believe that learning English is uh, definitely challenging but doable. Always remember that, like any other languages in the world. Mm -hmm. So if you're just starting to learn or struggling, hmm. so at this moment, always think, right, that it's just normal and it happens. Best speakers are once a beginner. So that's what we normally or that's what we always say right mm -hmm. it's more like thinking at first what are you going to do okay. or how are you going to excogitate things out you have to have plans okay mm -hmm. you shouldn't just go into battle without a plan mm -hmm. okay so, so some learners are not continuing their learning because they feel like it's really hard for them it's normal that mm -hmm. Learning a new language is really hard or challenging. But what you have to do is to have a plan and to to have a specific um, practice, right? Mm -hmm. You have to, to have a different way of learning. Okay. So, like what you have mentioned before, I, I can still remember that learning English is not that hard. It's just okay. that you haven't found the... What, I, I cannot really find the word that like you have just mentioned in that recording but mm -hmm. it's more like you haven't found the technique yet yes mm -hmm. that's what is the word that I was looking for you haven't found a technique yet so it's more like the practical English that you need mm -hmm. right for you to be able to improve so don't give up and keep on striving 
And if you want to improve your skills in mm -hmm. English, well, you have to improve it and go to the next level. So I have a question to all of our viewers. Are you ready to step up? Are you ready to step up? <laughs> <laughs> you have to be ready, okay? <laughs> you can comment down below. That's for you to connect and interact with us. Exactly. Stay tuned here at BB101 Radio for more updates. So, partner, wow, it's been fast yeah. and productive day. <laughs> Time flies so fast. Mm hmm so to all of our listeners uh, who stayed with us until the end of the show, thank you and hope that you all are doing great. And of course, we're going to see you next time. Yes, and keep on visiting our social media sites mm -hmm. that are flashed on your screen right now. Okay, once again, I am Kirvin. And I'm Shay. This is BB101 BB Radio. Radio. So, yeah. see you next week. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.